So Yvonne and I just figured out what we're going to do with the front of this truss, as well as the back side of the house. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill this in with two by tens running horizontal that will give the appearance that the bird blocking from the side of the house wraps around. We'll be using some two by six material uh, as a vertical at the end right here and then running out uh, to ex the extension of the truss, the overhang. We'll be doing that on all four corners. And to avoid having a seam in the center, we're going to do what we did here on the deck. And we're going to take this two by six, which is just right in the center of the deck. And we're going to extend that up, running vertical through the truss. Now, it's not going to run on the wall. It's just going to be a visual guide so that the separation here is the same location as the separation on the deck. I hope that makes sense. It'll probably be more clear once we get it done. So to transfer this location up to the truss, I'll use a plumb bob since I don't have a laser level. This is just a beautiful plumb bob. I got it at a garage sale, the same one where I got the vise, and it's just a work of art. Solid brass. It's marked with a 24 on it, which might mean 24 ounces. I'm not sure. It's very heavy, though. It's beautiful. Here I need to use multiple quick clamps. I'm screwing through the mending plates on the trusses, and if the board isn't held flush to the truss, it's gonna back out on you. So using 2x6 material, I framed in the outside and I extended the overhang. So now the overhang comes out flush with this fascia board. And then what I'll do is I'll do this on all four corners and then we'll fill in the gaps with 2x10s. And then our plywood sheathing will sit on top.
Okay, I've got all four corners done as well as the two center pieces. And the only thing I'm missing are four 12 foot two by tens. So I'll be picking those up either tomorrow or the next day. It's all ready to go. We'll be able to put those up and then have this facade completed. Okay guys, today's the next day. I picked up some two by tens the other day at Lowe's and we're gonna get these put up. What I have to do is establish the proper angle for the boards to be cut at. And I think it's gonna be three and a half degrees, but I'm gonna double check it using this little gadget here that'll allow me to establish exactly the right angle. So we're gonna get up on some scaffolding and get this done. A big thanks to our friends Pat and Case for the use of their scaffolding. It really came in handy. Some of these boards had an extreme crown to them and it was required to use some larger clamps in order to straighten it out. I was really trying to make sure there was no gap between the two boards. Here I'm using that tool to determine the exact angle of the board. I'll transfer that onto the 2x10 and then cut it on the miter saw. We're always trying to keep one eye on Chloe while we're up on scaffolding or ladders because we want to know where she's at and we discovered something. The top 2x10 stood about an inch proud over the truss, so that had to come down with the electric planer. A table saw would have been nice in this situation, but since we don't have one, uh, we made do with what we have, and the planer did a good job of it. So it took us about an hour and 10 minutes to get these four boards up. Getting the precise angle was probably the most difficult part. Anyways, we've got the other side to do, but it's pretty much going to be wash, rinse, and repeat. So I'm not going to put you through it. We finished up the back side of the house today. These 2x10 boards went up to cover that first outside truss. And of course, today, you know, with a little bit of experience, it went a lot better than it did yesterday. It took us about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to get all four done. And for me to also plane the, the top of the boards uh, level with the top of the joist. 
So as you can see, we've got plastic around the house because we're expecting a couple days of rain and actually some snow. And we decided we wanted to wrap this thing up and make sure that it's uh, protected. What we did was we cut the windows open to try to prevent the sail effect from the plastic because the plastic really catches the wind and creates quite a bit of pressure. Hard to get a staple to hold, which is why we're using the cap staples that are actually intended for our underlayment on the roof. So this is my new toy. It's called a cap stapler from a company called Stinger. And I bought it at, I think, I, oh, I got it at Home Depot. It was actually, Home Depot Online was the cheapest place around. And what it does is it uses 3 8 inch staples that go through a 3 quarter inch plastic cap. And it's actually used, and I'll be using it for the underlayment on the roof. It's especially thought for, uh, for synthetic underlayment, which is like a, kind of like a plastic tarp material. So that's what the product looks like when you put it in. It fastens a plastic cap using a staple. So what you do is, let me show you, you pull the trigger. Let's see if I can do this. You pull the trigger, it advances the plastic tab, and then it's like a regular hammer stapler that you just staple in. It was a good little practice. I just unpacked it and gave it a shot for the first time, and it's real easy to use. Again, just pull the trigger, it advances it, staple. Pretty good. Well, with winds between 30 and 35 miles an hour, this is a great test for these cap staples. And they're really holding great. After several really strong gusts of wind, the staples along the bottom started popping out. It had to do with the fact that I didn't put enough in. The stapling pattern was not sufficient. Yvonne held the tarp down and I put in staples every 12 inches along the bottom and the top and that solved the problem. I think I mentioned in a previous video that we got a killer deal on roofing underlayment. The regular price for this stuff was $130 a roll and it was on clearance at Lowe's for $26. So I bought three rolls. Each roll is good for 10 square. So two rolls will cover our roof no problem because there's going to be about a 25% overlap. So we have an extra roll and I figure we're going to use part of it to cover up our floor for the impending snow that's coming and any eventual rain. And it's going down so well that I think we're probably just going to leave it. It's very tough. We staple it down and we'll see how it works. But it was... Far cheaper than get buying a tarp, and it's going to be custom fit to the size of our floor. So we got to get back to it. This is one of those live and learn moments, and hopefully we can help other people who are doing a similar project. We wish we had done this from day one. This stuff is awesome. We've got it laid out, stapled down. Now, I know the manufacturer says you're not supposed to staple it, but that's when you're doing a permanent installation on a roof. And for our roof, we'll be using the cap staples I showed you. Now that we've got the underlayment laid out and stapled down, I'm using duct tape, weatherproof duct tape, to close up the seams. This is just awesome. We are absolutely thrilled, and we're going to make sure that it stays down for the entire rest of the project. If you guys have any questions about our project here, please let us know in the comment box below. As always, we appreciate your support. Yvonne, do we appreciate their support? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now say it like you mean it. Yes! <laughs> and what would a video be without a last little glimpse at the boss? Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.